Hello YouTube, Jerry Kirkpatrick here and today we're going to be making some sheet metal parts that will go on a couple of doors to a shed and we'll be finishing them up. This is the full layout and we'll also be doing some bead rolling. So the reason that we're starting somewhat late in the project is I got to this point and decided that what I'm doing, how I'm laying this out, might be of an interest uh, to a few of you. So the backstory is that a couple of years ago I put up a shed, a 10 by 10 by what the instructions said was a six foot shed. Well that was to the peak of the roof. So here's a picture of the shed as it was. I mean it was a miserable thing to walk around in. So I decided to raise it one foot and by doing so that left a 12 inch gap at the bottom of the doors. And that's what we're making here today is the filler for the bottom of the doors. In this picture you can see that I'm holding a 12 inch ruler and by adding the 12 inches to the bottom of the shed I can now walk around the inside of the shed without banging my head. And also you can see that at the bottom of the 12 inch ruler the opening of the door used to come to the bottom of my chin. So here's a picture of the bottom of the door that I have to make a couple of pieces that fit exactly in that profile. All of the spacer pieces that I used on the shed itself is exactly the same thing that we'll be using for raising or lowering the the doors. The sample pieces that I'm having to make to get the profile for each side of the door. Everything was made from uh, just galvanized flashing and it's 14 inches wide. So in order to make these sample pieces for the right and the left, I cut two strips three inches wide for each of them and I know that I'm starting with exactly 14 inches long and when I make all my bins all I have to do is measure the inside portion and I know how much material is used up in the bins. So by using some very sophisticated drawings I started laying out the pieces I had to make a duplicate of both the right and the left side, keeping in mind that one side has to be slid under one of the lips and the other side had to slip over the profile of the door. So after making both the right and the left side uh, door sample pieces. Let me show you how I arrived at the cut length to lay out all of these bins and determine where the bead rolling is going to take place. So in order to find my final cut length all I had to do was place this one underneath that flange where it belongs slide this one on to the other side 
where it needs to go. And all I had to do was measure the distance between the two, which comes out to four and three quarter inches. So I know that this piece was 14 inches right from the start and it is exactly where it needs to lie when we're finished. And I know this one is bent exactly to fit this profile and it was 14 inches when I began and I just add the four and three quarter inches that is the gap and that comes out to 32 and three quarter inches so that is the length of each side that I cut before I started laying out my bins. So after figuring out what my cut length needed to be, I laid out all of my uh, brake lines, brake lines, not brake lines, that's a different video. After I got everything laid out, I this side I could bend all the way over here, but this still needs to come up to 90 degrees, and then all of these have to be formed until I come out with a profile like this. And you may be asking why I've only uh, slightly bent uh, each of these. I made a bend line. I created a bend line for myself. So when I get to finishing these up, um, I can I can lay a, a piece of bar stock or a couple of things I can make on my bender, but the rest of them are going to have to be done by hand because I can't get them under the top leaf of the of the bender. And the reason that I have left them shallow like this, the next thing I'm going to do is do the bead rolling on them and the opening, the slot that goes down the length of my bead roller is only three quarter of an inch high. So as I turn these, this portion and this portion is going to have to go through that slot. So let's get to bead rolling and once the uh, there's a bead that will go around on the outside and then just a cross hatch for the um, for the center and all of that is just for stiffening so let me get the bead roller out and we'll get this done so i now have my uh, bead roller set up for just regular old beading dies and I have the depth set just so it will make the slightest bead on the on the piece because this has to slide uh, against another well a portion of the wall a portion of the door opening so I don't want this to come up very high and I only want it in three inches. I want it in three inches from this side and three inches from this side. So I have my, my fence set to three inches. And I'm doing the beading to the inside. This will actually be inside the door, inside the shed rather. So I don't want to go all the way to the to the bins. There's a, a radius in all four corners, and I like starting back a ways from the bend or from the radius. So as I come around this, I have some time to make sure that I line up exactly 
on the other die and on uh, the bead itself this is going to go to the inside so all I have to do is open that first set this about there that'll give me time to get around this corner and line up this edge on this line and I'll do this on this other side and the other two and when I get all of those done I'll bring you back when I finish these off okay so I've got all four of the beads run the straight ones uh, on this panel and the other panel so now I just have to follow this line around and make sure that I stay on with this edge right on this line so the bead is on the outside now here's where this comes in remember I left these kind of flat so I can get it underneath here and not mess this portion up you can see how this is inside this three-quarter inch gap now have about an inch from the start of this bead to where this is coming around this is where I have to make sure that this edge flows right into this already formed portion Just a little hit with a piece of wood and that this side came in good this side I'm not sure why that has a bump but that'll be taken out just by smacking that down so now I have uh, this end and the other two these will be done and then we'll start forming these two ends to a finish or no we have the uh, cross hatch to do yet so let me get these done and I'll bring you back and you can see how the cross hatching is done so what I have set up on my bead roller right now is a very soft uh, skateboard wheel and a flat washer that has been brought to somewhat of a point and then polished off so this is not going to cut it's going to leave just a groove uh, in the top surface of this but it won't cut through and I have it adjusted so it just barely goes down into the into the wheel maybe uh, an eighth of an inch maybe three sixteenths not very much And I have a line here and a line here 
which is my start and stop areas. So I'm going to go across here and then come back and go across here. Okay, there is the piece. Now I'll do the other one and we'll get the bending done up in this area and this here that just needs to come over 90 degrees. So here's the piece with the bead and the cross hatching in it. The first thing I'm going to do is bend this piece up to 90 degrees and luckily I can get this in my bender and bring this up to 90 One side done. And the next one I can do is this one here that needs to come up to 90 degrees. Then this one gets bent uh, 180 down and this one will come up like at a 45 degrees because this side here has to be able to slide onto the uh, the door itself. So there we have the 90, and this one goes 180, this one will go at 45, and then they'll be ready to install on the door, and then get the doors uh, <laughs> installed on the shed. So I hope you learned a little bit of something about how to lay out and uh, prepare for bead rolling and 
I think it was kind of important to know that you have to be aware of the sequence that you're going to be doing uh, this kind of work. If I had went ahead and bent everything up, I never would have been able to get to the bead rolling. And if I did the bead rolling first, I wouldn't have a nice flat piece to do all of my layout on. So, um, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. See you in the next one.